Hello everybody, um, Christian Andruard speaking and uh, welcome to today's webinar on sustainability reporting. Uh, I'm the secretary of the UFI Sustainable Development Committee and I will start with a general element of context about sustainable development and the exhibition industry. I will then introduce reporting on sustainability and Eloise will then take over to present positive impact to give you some insights into uh, GRI, the GRI EOSS and the UFI template. Uh, she will then answer questions and I will then uh, take over to uh, conclude this uh, session. I now move to page number two with a quick uh, introduction on sustainable development. Uh, you find here the definition which was adopted by the United Nations in 1987 and below a graph which is taken from Wikipedia which ex explains that sustainability is at the crossroads of three uh, elements, social elements, environment elements and economical elements. Uh, only when you meet the three criteria you can claim uh, to be sustainable. I now move to slide number three. Sustainability issues are increasingly affecting business. Uh, why? First, there is a rising awareness by stakeholders, whether they are investment analysts, governments, employees, potential employees or clients. Maybe they should be the other, it should be the other way around, listed the other way around. Um, second point, um, there are uh, more and more initiatives from government to manage environmental issues. I have this quote from a very interesting report which is available on the web. Uh, it was produced by KPMG very recently and uh, they regu regularly produce uh, a report called Carrots and Sticks. And they have now identified 180 initiatives around the globe of um, frameworks implemented by governments. They cover 45 countries and regions and that is in fact three times more than what was identified in 2006. Uh, in this report you do find um, the precise uh, frameworks uh, per country. So as <coughs> McKinsey um, was uh, saying uh, already two years ago, the choice for companies is not if but how they should manage their sustainability initiatives. I now move to slide number four. Um, okay, F fine said, uh, we, knew we need to implement sustainability, but how do we proceed? Well, uh, there seems to be uh, something called CSR proliferation. Uh, at least that's what uh, Cornis von der Lucht from UNEP uh, did tell us in 2009. And he did produce this slide which uh, explained how in fact um, there was a generally accepted global framework which included uh, no principal normative codes in red from the OCDE, government standards, again OCDE, management systems, ISO, performance standards, performance reporting and assurance standards. And so for a few years now um, the frameworks are, have been identified, the right frameworks have been identified. And we are now, in fact, moving from probably the, what would be the next step, which is integrated reporting, whereby companies will be asked to report not only on financial elements, but also on non-financial elements, and that is sustainability. I now move to uh, talking, introducing uh, our exhibitions. Our message, uh, general message on communication is to explain that exhibitions are a sustainable way of doing business. Why is that? First, they contribute to economic and social developments uh, thanks to trade, thanks to international trade. Um, and in terms of environmental assets, um, we do believe that they are also uh, sustainable. Why? because exhibitions first reduce multiple travel and second because as far as the uh, exhibition itself is concerned uh, companies from the exhibition industry are very active in reducing uh, 
the components that they directly control. I now move to slide number six. Uh, this is um, a slide taken from uh, Joronvit Consulting, which gives you an explanation on why exhibition reduce multiple travel. The basic principle is that, as you can see on the chart on the left, without an exhibition, when four suppliers want to meet three potential customers, it takes 12 journeys to achieve so. With an exhibition, thanks to this unity of place and time, um, you do reduce the number of necessary journeys to seven. Uh, obviously, uh, when you increase these numbers, you increase the numbers of journeys which are saved. And uh, with 100 and exhibitors and 50 visitors, uh, you can see that the number of safe journeys, which is almost 5,000. This is obviously a theoretical exercise because you don't necessarily meet all uh, the people you want to see at a fair. Uh, but even if you take half of this number, you can see that uh, it ex exponentially um, increases. And so this is a, a real asset for exhibitions. Also, as I said before, many companies are very active uh, in the field, and uh, we'll talk later about uh, several um, examples. Uh, as far as the exhibition itself is concerned, we do have a few measurements, and even though you can't compare uh, one show with another, uh, we do have examples of some shows which uh, produce as little as 17 kilograms of CO2 footprint per square meter of uh, dead space rented. So uh, some companies do monitor this, and uh, the topic of reporting we're ending today uh, should uh, definitely lead to this. Um, but as you can see, some people are doing it, and uh, we're not necessarily as uh, heavy in terms of uh, footprint as other industries, obviously. Uh, another element which is relevant to the event industry altogether, all segments, not just exhibitions, is that we are very lucky to already have our own frameworks. Uh, these have been launched in 2012, and they are the ISO on one side and the GRI on the other side. Uh, they're not, in fact, uh, one against another. They do uh, both work together. The first one, the ISO uh, standard, is about is a management system. So it's about how you should work, whereas the GRI guidelines are how you should report on the way you do it. So uh, ideally, you use both. Uh, you may start with looking at what reporting involves and then uh, go to the management system. But ideally, you start, obviously, with the way you should work, which is a management system and then you decide very clearly uh, on how to report. Um, UFI has uh, taken these two frameworks on board, and we have uh, developed a course, as far as the ISO is concerned, to explain about sustainability and to explain uh, what it's all about. Even for the ISO standard altogether, is very flexible and very easy, in fact, to, to adapt to each company but we produced a, a video online course, which is available on our website. And as far as the uh, reporting framework is concerned, we have just released uh, a template which simplifies the GRI uh, guidelines and that we are going to develop uh, further on uh, during this session. So uh, introduction to reporting on sustainability. Uh, First, why should we report on sustainability? Uh, so I'll go through quickly some benefits and challenges of reporting, and then I'll introduce our template by giving some background on its development. I now move to slide number 10. Uh, this slide and the next two, I believe, uh, are from, uh, taken from a GRI presentation. What are the benefits of reporting? Well, some are internal and some are external. First, um, the internal benefits, uh, the first of them, is that it helps your company develop a vision and a strategy of sustainability. 
uh, without vision or strategy, uh, obviously it would be more difficult. Also, it will help you, it shall help you improve management systems. It will also help you to identify your strengths and weaknesses. It may also help you attract and motivate the staff. It should help connect departments and also promote innovations within the company. And it may very well uh, give you a source of competitive advantage and help you become a market leader. And also, as we mentioned before, investors are uh, increasingly looking at good practices in sustainability altogether, beside uh, financial results. In terms of external benefits, um, we believe that it would enhance uh, reputation, trust and respect. It also improves transparency and dialogue with stakeholders. It demonstrates, obviously, commitment to sustainability. And ultimately, but we're not there yet, it will enable comparability and benchmarking. So that's why it's potentially important to start reporting soon, because when it become common practice, only those who have started early uh, are, are likely to be better than the others. I'm now moving to um, slide 11. The challenges of reporting, well, uh, first, you can't really uh, start sustainability without a commitment at all levels, and especially senior staff. Uh, most people who have uh, achieved something or always stress on uh, this as a really important factor. Without senior management uh, wanting this to happen, there's hardly uh, any chance. To uh, produce a picture of the real performance of the organization by also communicating negative results. That's important because uh, the whole approach is about being transparent. The, you, do, you don't want to be uh, um, green, greenwashing or uh, use this just as a marketing tool. Uh, it's only by uh, being transparent and honest about your results that you can engage a credible uh, dialogue with your stakeholders on this topic. The earlier, the better, obviously. Number three, uh, choosing and engaging with key stakeholders. As we mentioned, this is a, a good tool to, to discuss with uh, your clients, your uh, local authority, your transport uh, partners, and so on. Uh, deciding also on what are important issues to include. That's called the material aspects within GRI. And it's uh, important to realize that all this is flexible and it's down to your company in its own environment. Uh, but that's why uh, ISO and GRI are, are flexible enough in that respect. Uh, there are not checklists that you uh, would uh, have to follow because it all depends on your organization, um, your um, your partners also, and your environment altogether you're in. Uh, number five, establishing practical and realistic goals and targets and preparing the organization to achieve them. Well, obviously, um, it's, uh, it can be a complex issue. Uh, you have to be aware of what can be done. You have to be aware of priorities, uh, and then also take into account number six, which is collecting, organizing, and analyzing the necessary information. Here again, we have a lot of people who said, uh, yes, they wanted to do it, but it took them more than a year before they could reach uh, reliable results, because sometimes it's about, for instance, implementing uh, a new uh, meters for electricity in a specific part of the venue, uh, and so on. So uh, this has to be anticipated uh, as much as possible. Of course, manage expectations around final reports. Uh, not everything is going to be right uh, straight away. Uh, so you have to explain this. This is a, a long process. You'll be better the second time, uh, and so on. And also producing a clear document that meets readers' different needs after difficulty in process of collecting data from different areas. So here uh, we'll give you uh, tips later and examples of companies who have uh, done well um, in this area. 
And then number nine, keeping the process going to the next reporting period. Of course, it's not a one-shot exercise. You may not want to do this every year, but it's important uh, to, once you have started this initiative, uh, not to give it up, obviously. Uh, so going now, moving now to our template uh, for sustainability reporting in the exhibition industry. Um, why did we start this? Because it was a recognition that, in fact, many companies of the exhibition industry were keen to report uh, using a GRI, because GRI is definitely the most accepted framework uh, in the world. Um, but the template, which is available through GRI, uh, can sometimes appear confusing. And there were some uh, indicators which did not 100% uh, relate to the exhibition industry. That's why we consider that a simplified version with a short list of selected indicators uh, would be a useful resource. So I'm now moving to um, page 13. So you feel positive impact managed to uh, a process to simplify the information in order to make this reporting template as accessible as possible. With this, this work that was undertaken by a group of the uh, committee, UFI Committee on Sustainable Development, and we had representatives of uh, several countries and seven profiles within our industry. Uh, we have uh, large venues like uh, ADNEC and uh, the Direct Energy Center in Canada. Uh, we have uh, organizers like with exhibitions in UBM. And we also had AOMA, which represents the whole uh, industry in Germany. And also BPA, who is an auditing company uh, involved in sustainability assessment. The design of the development of the template took place uh, earlier this year, and it was released uh, on 12th of June. And you can download it uh, by going to this uh, web address on the UFI website, uh, where we have uh, all our UFI actions. It's an Excel file, and uh, Eloise will detail it later. And uh, moving, in fact, to slide number uh, 15, so positive impact. Positive impact was set up by uh, Fiona Pelham that uh, some of you may have heard of. Um, she has shared the uh, ISO, the development of ISO 2012-1 that we uh, developed, uh, that we mentioned before. And uh, positive impact is a non-for-profit association based in Manchester, whose vision is the creation of a sustainable event industry. Um, as such, they have um, a lot, undertaken a lot of work in the field of education within the event industry. Uh, we have decided to partner with them uh, more than a year ago now, and they are UFI member, and they are part of the Committee on Sustainable Development. Uh, GRI. GRI is uh, a non-for-profit association based in Amsterdam, in the Netherlands. Uh, they have developed uh, uh, reporting frameworks on sustainability, which is the most uh, uh, developed one and the most uh, accepted one uh, in, in the world for sustainability uh, elements. Um, I invite you to go to their website and have a look. Uh, as you, you will see, uh, they organize twice a year uh, a big conference, which is really the uh, meeting place uh, for talking about sustainability every two years. Uh, what is the GRI EOSS? Um, GRI has developed a general framework, but sometimes they realize that this needs to be suited to different industries. And that's why they have developed uh, one for the event industry, which is called the Event Organizer Sector Supplement. I now move to slide 19 to explain that this was developed uh, with a working group composed of all the organizations you can see there. Uh, in fact, UFI was also part of it, but at a different level called the advisory board. Uh, but you can probably recognize uh, known um, companies in our industry like uh, Red Exhibitions first, for example. 
Um, so positive impact, well, here again, um, I invite you to go and have a look uh, on their website because they do produce a lot of uh, uh, material uh, which is available once you register to their website. Uh, they have produced uh, their own sustainability report as well. Uh, this is probably to explain that uh, sustainability can apply to several um, segments, whether sport, I mean, within the event industry, it can cover sporting events, business events, uh, and also, of course, cultural events. I now move to um, slide number 22. JERA introduces different levels of uh, reporting, A being the top level, B uh, medium level, and C the entry level. So uh, this is where we start, and this is where we, what we started using to develop the template for the exhibition industry. The JERA EOSS um, covered 97 indicators, and what we thought is that what that was a bit uh, too complicated. You can see on slide 23 um, an example of the EOSS. So if we move to slide number 24, what we did is we reviewed these 97 indicators and we uh, first selected 55, which we thought were appropriate for the exhibition industry. We then listed these indicators and asked which ones thought should be the top 15 for a given segment. So if you're a venue, which ones are the 15 most important? If you're an organizer, same exercise, and if you're a service provider. And then the next 15 were considered as medium priority. So as you can um, understand, the template applies to all uh, segments of our industry. And this is particularly important because uh, we are an industry which interconnects uh, the different segments. And it's very important when you talk about sustainability to include it uh, through the whole uh, chain of value. Um, so the template is composed of two parts. The first one is what GRI calls the profile disclosures. So in fact, it's what your company is about. It's general elements about your company and what you decide to report on. Um, and the second part is a list of all the indicators. So they are, uh, it's an Excel file and you have different um, sheets depending on the areas uh, you, want, you, you want to report on. So there's one, for instance, for environment, another one for society, third one on labor, uh, and so on. So this is an Excel file, very user-friendly, that you can uh, amend uh, as you wish. Um, w one more element is that we uh, would like, of course, the exhibition industry to report, and we realized that there were 10 which appeared as top priority for all three segments. So we have identified uh, them, and we consider them as uh, mandatory. Even for the exercise, of course, it's not mandatory. Uh, if we could get uh, many companies to report on these 10 segments, uh, we would have a significant uh, value and a message to, to explain uh, that our industry is committed and report in a really consistent manner on, the, on this topic. I now move to um, slide 25 to show you, uh, even so it's difficult to read, but just to show you a little bit the, uh, the look of a template. So this is the general uh, fact sheet I was talking about. As you can see, it's uh, rather easy to, to read and, uh, and fill in. If I move to number 26, uh, you do have an example of one sheet, which is the environment indicators. So you can see the columns. Uh, top for all would mean one of these 10 indicators I was referring to across the segments. 
and then second column venue green color high priority medium orange is medium priority and then organizer and then supplier and so in lines you have all the indicators and if you click on the green box for each of them you would have additional comments which would help you uh, to to understand what is behind the indicators each indicator uh, is the official uh, GRI name and number so this is um, really an exercise that is uh, can be kept and be consistent across your if you later want to move to the full uh, GRI reporting. If I move uh, to slide number 27, uh, here again uh, the address to go to, to download the document. Next step uh, about this um, template, well, first we want to promote the use. Uh, we will uh, expect that some national associations who are already involved in uh, sustainability will help us relay the information. Uh, we are aware that translation can be an issue, but in fact, this issue should be easily solved because GRI is already translated in many, many languages. And so they are aware of the, of the template. They are happy that we are doing so, and they'll be uh, obviously happy to if we use their, their translation. Um, we will also promote those who do report using the template or GRI or possibly also other frameworks. Uh, and we have started doing so at the web address of the UFI website we gave earlier. We have a full web page uh, where we list uh, those reports we believe are interesting for all. Uh, so, so far we do have uh, two or three reports. Uh, and I will come to that later, in fact. In the future, um, our committee, internal committee, will check the quality of any uh, report we receive. Quality doesn't mean um, that it has to be covering all indicators and so on. We'll just uh, make sure that all those uh, covered uh, are, are properly done. Uh, again, it's not necessarily a question of quantity here. It's just a question of starting the, the exercise and reporting uh, in the correct manner. Uh, we will also obviously review the template every year. Uh, the first review will include uh, the fact that the GRI guidelines has now moved since May to a new generation called G4. And uh, so we will translate our template in G4. Uh, this is easy because there'll be uh, transferring tables and so on. So there's no harm in starting with G3. All, all the companies who have uh, G3 reports right now will have to move, and uh, this should be uh, rather easy to achieve. Um, I now move to slide number 20 to let you know that as far as the ISO um, framework is concerned, uh, we have produced this course, online course, which is called Eight Steps to Sustainability. Uh, this is also available online. This is an online course, uh, rather cheap. Uh, so please uh, go connect and uh, and go through it. It's eight different modules, and you can do it uh, uh, by spending uh, an hour uh, every day uh, as you wish. You can stop and start again uh, when you want. You can. Also contact me, here is my email, if you want any more information on that or if you want uh, to use it at multiple sites. Uh, we also have an annual award scheme in order to collect interesting cases and promote them to give uh, examples to everybody. In 2012, we started with a theme of best, development, best sustainable development strategy and Amsterdam Rai uh, won this uh, competition. This year we've had two themes. Uh, one was uh, Best Innovative Environmental Initiative, and that was won by uh, Scan Display, uh, who produced a temporary exhibition related to the COP uh, conference. Uh, and uh, their case is available on the website as uh, the, all the winners. The case is for all winners, and even the finalists, actually. 
And uh, we had a second theme which um, directly tackles the topic of uh, today, which is on reporting. Uh, I invite you all to go and have a look at the report produced by CTICC. Uh, they have a, a strong um, background in, in the area. It's not their first report, but uh, we all the jury considered that this was the best report uh, we, we, we had in the competition. And it's definitely a, a top level uh, report which reached uh, level B of uh, GRI reporting. Uh, we also organize uh, conferences which are open to non UFI members. We started this in 2009 uh, with a sort of introductionary topic called why and how. Uh, in 2011, we started uh, showing what was happening. And in 2012, we went a bit further by talking about uh, winning strategies with uh, examples of companies with leading practices. Uh, we are organizing a new one in uh, Geneva uh, in 2013, December, um, and will be hosted, I now move to slide 13, will be hosted uh, by Palexpo, who's also a, a really strong company uh, in that field in Geneva, and the topic will be best practices and tips. Uh, we'll be talking about uh, environmental initiatives, and we'll also be talking a lot on reporting. Uh, we also plan to uh, release a report on what will be the current status of sustainability in the exhibition industry. I'm going to do a survey uh, on this to assess where we are now. And we also have Palexpo uh, to explain a bit on their initiatives. I'm moving to now page uh, 34 to uh, mention uh, again this uh, survey that we will soon uh, release. Um, we will ask any company, not just UFI members, in fact, where they stand. And uh, if you have any contacts you think would be interested for us to survey, like an exhibitor really involved, or one who doesn't want to be involved, uh, please give us uh, their uh, contact details, because we would like to survey everybody. Uh, this could also include uh, your national association, even though we will contact them already. But your local authority, if you have a local authority who is a bit reluctant, uh, we can survey them. It would be remain anonymous, but it, it's interesting to hear uh, all views on, on the topic. If, on the other hand, you have one who's really involved, committed, or ask you to, to do more, uh, also please uh, send us uh, the details. Uh, so that's it um, for uh, me. Um, you have here again the web address where you can have more detail and my email. I will move to uh, the last slide, which is 36, to give you Eloise's um, email as well. I hope you have all um, found this uh, session beneficial. It will be, uh, it is recorded and will be available on the um, educations, UFI Education Center shortly. Uh, in the meantime, if you have uh, any questions, please contact me at uh, Chris at my email address. Thank you very much, and bye-bye, everybody.